Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my backyard and uh, welcome to yet another sawmill adventure video. So last fall we cut up the base of the largest cherry tree from Iowa and I have a, another piece of it here that I'm going to be cutting up today. So when we picked up this tree, we had some logs on Josh's trailer and then we had some logs on mine. So today I'm going to be cutting up this piece here, which is the bigger log that I hauled back on my trailer. And when we pull it out of here, we'll see this, uh, this thing's got some kind of crazy curve in it this way, and it's got a crotch here. So this is going to be better off being cut into shorter lengths and then cut up into uh, lumber. But we'll get a better look at this thing when we get it over onto the saw. But there we go. we got some crotch action kind of up in there, and we should have some fairly straight green stuff down in here. So I'm going to grab a towel handler, and we'll get this thing out of here. Okay, so if you take a look at this guy here, you can see we got this uh, kind of hump, kind of curve thing going on here. So of course, as always, I'm after this, uh, this crotch figure down here, so I really care about this. And then down here, we also have some limbs and stuff, but mostly kind of a straight green kind of log. So I'm gonna come in here and chop it in half, probably right around here. And that's gonna give me more yield out of both halves of this thing versus trying to saw it like this. If I saw it like this, it would be kind of cool because the first two slabs would have live edge all the way around. They'd be kind of oval shape as you get down there. But then as you get to the bottom, you get like partial length boards. You'll end up with stuff that looks like this, where you have basically like a giant tapered wedge thing and you have live edge on like the top of it. So it's kind of like weird, goofy shapes. So as far as usability goes, I'd rather have normal-ish boards with like end grain <laughs> on them. So you can just cut this thing in half and then we'll process both halves as their own individual logs. All right, let's get ready to start sawing. I gotta get these positioned and while I'm kind of thinking about stuff, I gotta fill up my lube bottle. So I know I've got questions about what I'm spraying on the blade quite a bit over the years. So back in the day, I just used uh, diesel, which works a lot better than like water and some kind of soap. At least in my opinion, it makes the blade runs a lot quieter. And when I was in a residential area, having a quieter saw was always nice. And then people always suggested to add uh, like bar oil to the diesel. And I never did that because I always have like the fancy bar oil that I buy from my fancy chainsaws. So one time I went out and bought some like cheapo bar oil and gave it a try. And it does actually help quite a bit because the bar oil actually gives it a little more like, I don't know, grippiness or whatever. It clings to the, the blade. So it actually use less of it versus just using the diesel. And the diesel is a fantastic um, solvent. That's really what we're trying to do is just keep all that pitch from building up on the blade. It's not a coolant 
you should, your blade shouldn't be getting hot to need coolant. So it just keeps that pitch off. If the blade's getting hot, it's either dull or it's dirty, and you have pitch building up on there, and that band's actually being dragged through, through the cut, which we know we talked in the past, the band is not in contact with the wood as it's being dragged through the blade, through the, through the, ah, through the log, because the teeth have set, and the teeth are cutting a wider path than the band. So if your band's getting thicker because it's full of crap, it's going to drag through and you end up with heat buildup from friction. So roughly 50-50-ish mixture. It's not an exact science. And uh, it goes in this little spray bottle thing because I never got around to installing all of the actual auto drip loop components on the saw. They've been sitting in a drawer in the shop since I built the thing for six years. Okay, that's ready to go. Let's take a look at some logs. Let's see what's going on here. So this guy's got this limb here coming up the top, which I think will make some at least more interesting figure than how it's laying right now and just chopping it off. So we'll probably end up maybe just like rolling this one down. <gasps> Look how strong I am. Having it more like that. So we'll, we'll massage that a little more in a second. And then for the crotch, of course, this is what I actually care about the most. We want the limbs here to be level and even with the butt end. So we're still sitting a little low here. I put a two by four under here as a little bit of a starting point. The side's got a couple little bit still. So we're gonna get the machines out again and just kind of finagle things a little more and get them positioned. And then we can make our first facing cuts. Oh, she's heavy. <laughs> All right, well, well, it's probably good. Let me try and lock it in at this roll angle. More blocking. Let's try that. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Probably not a whole lot. Kind of still in the sap, but at least we got an idea of shape, I guess. Oh. That's pretty. That's the cherry. Let's see what's going on here. Oh. That is actually pretty nice. I think I forgot how nice this tree was. You got some more of that really nice deep rich red stuff going on here, of course, but I don't know, there's like a certain like tonal quality to the, the cherry red in this tree. So, yep. <laughs> Let's roll it over and we'll get slicing.
Go for it, he says. What's that? Look at it, we got a little hole. Look at that. Oh, the grain around there. Look at that grain around there. That's why I love defects. They come with such beauty. Let's see what this one's got going on. Nothing much. Just kind of getting there still. That one's going to be a little while until we see anything too crazy. We got a little knot right there, right now. And we'll have a few cuts till we get to the crotch. Oh, that's cool. That is wild green. Why does it look bigger now? It just looks smaller before. We got number three. Right into the camera. Oh my god, all the crap from the bucket. Right, let's see what number two's got. Kind of worked. Kind of worked. So, this one's got some interesting things going on because we have these two kind of limb knot things. So, we have a smaller one down here, which is that big bulge that was on the side there. There's all kinds of almost like bird's eye kind of figure around here, which is pretty cool. And then this guy here, we got some crotch figure type of figure thing on top of that uh, inclusion here. This is kind of like a rot area here for in that limb. And that might be a little bit of rot too. Then we got a lot of clear stuff up towards the top there. And as we come to the next cut off the logs, slab number three, we have kind of the same thing, but just more, more bigger or, and you can see we have a lot of discoloration here. That is some rot staining from this cut up here. Kind of rotting it in here and we got some staining coming all the way down. So the nice thing about cherry is you have that rot stain, which is going to be around anywhere near rot, but it's still completely solid. It doesn't have any of the, uh, the punkiness 
of actually being rotten. All right, number five. That is gorgeous. Look at that crotch. All right, here we go, number four. Kind of missed on that one. Poor coverage. So this one's actually you know, it's getting a lot better here. So up here, actually, hopefully the camera can see this. We actually have some curl and undulation here. It's on a diagonal in this direction here. So it's like this weird, like, figured thing going on up there. But then, of course, as we come down here, this is where all the action starts to happen. So we have a little more figure from this uh, limb right here. And we're getting a whole lot of crazy stuff happening down here from this larger limb coming up here. So we have all the crotch figure coming down through here. We have more of this kind of figured undulation thing going on through here. And of course we have a few little wormholes here in our, uh, in our crotch there. So that's kind of annoying, but you know, a little more visual interest. Coming over here, we got, uh, we got the pith here. So this is the center of the tree as it grew. And you can see all the original tiny little limbs that didn't quite make it and kind of fell off throughout the years. And you can see the crack that comes all the way through there. That's the very center of that tree. Crotch figure on this one is even more spectacular as we get even more crazy figure through here from the crotch. And then we have all of this, like, I don't even know what you want to call this, curl or like micro curl figure stuff going on through here. And then we have some more figure, which is almost more like a blotchy kind of figure down here toward, towards the outside. And you can see our sapwood is kind of a greeny gray as this log has been sitting out for I don't know, is it two years almost? Coming up on two years, this log's been sitting here. All right, here we go. very full bucket it kind of got it kind of got away from me i think that's beautiful it's all quarter sun 
<laughs> so now that we're even further towards the pith, you can see our pith cracks through here. We are perfectly coarse on either side of the pith. Super straight green here through the cherry. There's no cathedral patterns because it's coarse on. We got the last little bit of figure from that limb that was, was going that way now. We have an old limb here, which got, has some cool figure around it. And then we get back down here to all the cool figure and wildness that's going on down here. With this darker area here, it's all rot stain from the previous slabs down there, kind of infiltrating this way. We got that kind of fun curl thing going on here. And we got our crotch feather and we got our crotch worms eating away at our beautiful crotch. Get out of there. So since we haven't gotten any uh, measurements yet, because I got too excited about the grain, let's take a look and see what we got for some measurements here. For this length on this guy, it's a six footer. And uh, through here, which is the widest section, 39 inches is pretty darn good. Up in here, we got 26, so that's, that's a pretty good piece of wood right here. I figure it's just absolutely killer on this thing. Up here for the crotch, you know, we got probably the same thing here, 20, 28 kind of down here. And we're going to splay eh, about 38 or so. That's a pretty good area of, uh, of wood there. I think this is probably the same length too. Probably about a six footer. Yep, just a little under six feet. So yeah, I didn't realize that whole log was like 12 feet long. That's pretty cool. We got some actual decent stuff. So I guess we'll get back to the sawing a little bit here. One thing I'm going to do a little differently this time though is on this guy, I'm gonna cut one slab off of here. Then I'm gonna drop down two uh, thicknesses, which should give me some really thick stock if I wanna do um, some bracket feet, or um, bracket feet, uh, ball and claw feet for the Bombay chest. I need some really thick stock for that. So I'll give me a slab that I can get some of that uh, thick material out of. Someone cut this one kind of thick. Who could that be? What kind of crazy person. Right, let's see what this is. Number seven, what we got? That was good coverage. Very nice coverage. All right, let's see what this giant chunk has going on. All right, so this one, we're getting away from the figure a little bit, but we have like the remnants of some of the crotch through there. Still some really nice, beautiful, clear green up in here, and we're getting away from the pith now, so we're getting away from some of that cracking, but there's still a little bit. We got a little bit of that going on there, but that's, uh, that's this guy still. A ton of figure down this whole like side of the tree. And then over here for my giant chunk for uh, feet, what I was trying to do was get away from the pith enough so that I have at least some kind of rift orientation here so the 
any kind of square area of the feet will be nice straight grain on all the sides that's kind of the idea there just trying to get enough clear stuff so i can get as many blanks out of this as possible i think this is going to work out well there's really no defects in here i have pretty well clear cuttings i can probably get three blocks wide out of here so this will last me the rest of my life <laughs> but you know remember back when we did the base of the tree we had a whole bunch of little burls this one's got it too so that tree must have had all kinds of little burls as it was uh, kind of growing up. Okay, so there is the last slab, just kind of some clear, pretty sexy cherry, just, you know, basic clear stuff. We got, you know, a few little burls here and there, but for the most part, pretty clear, except for this cool ice detail, just sliced right out of there. And we got uh, an upside down icicle, which is pretty sweet. So this guy, I have been uh, waiting to stack because of the way that it was shaped. I have these like partial length pieces that were on top because of that bulge. So I want to stack this log exactly as it's laying on the saw. So my first slab is going to be the bottom slab. So this one's going to be a little shuffling to basically unload it from the bottom up. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. Ooh. Okay, okay. All right, let's see. This one's got some serious crotch. <laughs> that is a lot. Crotch feather. This is getting ridiculous. This is all kinds of figure. <laughs> I, I, I got no words for this one. All right, here we go. That's, yeah, I got nothing. This, it's all, all the way down, top to bottom, nothing but crotch. All right, this one should be the best one in theory. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. That is, yep, that's, that's crotch. A lot of crotch. Okay, let's see what's going on with this guy. That is still, you don't have like the vivid, like crotch lines, but you have this crazy band. All right, let's take a look at the last few ones here as we get kind of away from the crotch. We should still just have some kind of fun cherry type stuff going on. Very clear-ish. We got that one kind of knot limb thing here, kind of smack dab in the middle, but we got a lot of crazy, beautiful color. And uh, actually, it's not really any figure. We have like the remnants of Got the crotch band through here, it's a little bit darker and more rich, but otherwise, just some cool, fun cathedrals. So this is a, this is a great day. It's nice to be outside finally. We're starting to get into some kind of spring weather, which is uh, always nice to come out of the dead of winter and be outside and feel, uh, feel alive again. So this, very cool. This thing, super duper extra awesome. So much amazing crotch figure in here. I'm really glad we got this chunk of the, the tree. The, I don't know, it was like somewhere up the main trunk. 
and uh, it's very similar to the smaller crotch section that we cut last year, or whenever that was, a year and a half ago. Just uh, a little longer, so that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So this is a fun day and uh, full of crotch and all that good stuff. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on uh, the sawmill or anything back in the shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking and crotch. Happy crotch. Crotch woodworking. <laughs>